Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Jake Gordon and Alex Lord, home of your 2-0 Atlanta Falcons Sunday's game. Was a thriller. Wasn't always pretty, especially in the first half. But Desmond Ritter, we've talked about it all offseason. Eventually, he's going to have to come down and make some plays in the fourth quarter for this team to win. He made those plays with both his arm and his legs. B. John Robinson looks like a guy who could win Offensive Player of the Year. He might already be the best running back in all of football, and he's only a rookie. He was sensational um, on Sunday afternoon. But what is your biggest takeaway from a thrilling 25-24 victory? And what was a game that I would say the Falcons lose 10 times out of 10 over the last 10 years? This feels like... The, the Packers just falconed the game uh, and somehow we won the game. So it, very interesting. I mean, listen, to be on the right side of one of these, it's a new feeling. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'd call this a takeaway, but that, that Arthur Smith's that, that was just an insanely gutsy call uh, going forward on fourth down when you could have had the field goal. And that's one of those moments. If you're a Falcons fan, <clears throat> you know, the old Falcons, you kick a field goal right there. You don't go for it on fourth. You kick that field goal. And that's when the Packers march right down the field and rip your heart out. But yeah, Bijan. I mean, he he's he's dead. To, he's dead to rights in the backfield on that play. He's just so strong, and he has such good balance and, and agility. He just makes two cuts, ends up getting like eight yards on a play he should have been stopped behind the line of scrimmage. The kid's just amazing. He brings a whole different dimension to the game. I mean, that you look, they had him split out wide. Yeah, they had him in the backfield. They had him in the slide. Like the kid just does everything. And I think that play call right there, I, you know, just knowing the the Falcons and the history that they've had, I think that play call like. I think it kind of won the game, honestly. I don't think that is crazy to say at all. I think it absolutely won them the game. Uh, the players fed off of Arthur Smith's confidence, and they rewarded him, uh, rewarded him and the fans. Uh, the stadium looked packed. Uh, Falcons fans are finally excited again. Uh, this, like I tweeted it out, this isn't your daddy's Falcons. I mean, yeah, we lose that game 10 times out of 10 uh, from 2012 to 2022. Uh, 10 times out of 10. Uh, finally, Desmond Ritter flips the script for the Falcons. My biggest takeaway has to be Ritter and Bijan. I'll start with Ritter uh, and hand it back to you guys. He was sensational in the fourth quarter. Sensational. Uh, he looked really, really bad in the first half, and anybody who tells you otherwise is just sugarcoating it. He looked terrible. He had one interception, which wasn't honestly his fault. He was bumped and, you know, more process than results. The process was fine. But he also had two interceptions that were not caught, and one of which Jair Alexander looked like he could have taken it to the house. Uh, it was a fourth down, so the Falcons didn't, uh, you know, leave points on the board per se. Uh, but that could have been, you know, almost a nail in a coffin, even though it was early in the game. Uh, he was he looked rough. They looked out of sync uh, in the first half. But all that really matters is that fourth quarter. I think he was six for eight. That Mac Collins uh, flea flicker to open up the game. He kind of underthrew it, but Mac Collins went up and got it. And Mac Collins surprised me a lot uh, on Sunday. And then you see Bijan Robinson just making plays. He is the most exciting player I have seen in a Falcons uniform since Julio Jones. I said it in the offseason before I even watched a game. Uh, and I am doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on this is the kid. He is the face of the franchise already. Uh, he, he does everything on the field the right way and off the field. He's just like, you know, Arthur Blank's got, a, got, a, got another son uh, on the team. He's just the, he's a perfect model to be the face of the franchise. He was sensational as well yesterday. Yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, you talk about Ritter and, you know, what they're doing is not sustainable in my opinion, but it's hard to win in the NFL, man. And you'd rather win ugly than lose pretty. Yeah, you, nobody's apologizing over here for an ugly win. And I and I know that we can all critique and later in the week. I'm sure we'll critique it more. We're just kind of overviewing the Falcons right now. I haven't rewatched the game just yet. But nobody should be upset about winning ugly in the NFL. It is very hard to win in this league. And the Falcons are 2-0. and And two wins against NFC teams. And we all think that the Packers are probably a playoff team. 1-0 in the division, 2-0 in the NFC. I mean, I don't know how anyone is here and sitting and complaining. I mean, this is awesome. This is a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, B. John Robinson, like, just talking more about him, it, it feels like he's, like, gliding around the field. Like, his cuts in and out of cuts, like, it's like it's almost like he disappears for a second, and then he just, like, pops up, like, six yards ahead. I mean, he, is he, he looks like he's playing a different game. I mean, I don't think – I don't think we've I've ever seen a running back. And the Falcons have had some good running backs in my lifetime, work done, Michael Turner. Like, they've had some studs. I haven't seen anyone like this. I mean, his, his explosiveness, his in-and-out-of-breaks, <clears throat> uh, his ability to make 
get chunk plays. I mean, we haven't even seen one yet, but I mean, does it, does it not just feel like a matter of time before he breaks one of these off for like 75 yards and takes it to the house? Like he's, I, I he, like people were like questioning. He's the so elusive, man. Pick. Yeah. We, we got like, we backed it up. You know, we talked about him potentially being the pick. And then when it happened, we were all big fans of it, but I, I'm telling you, it's, it's even more impressive to watch every Sunday. And, and the, the crazy part about it is I don't know where you'd rank him. And I know it's too early to like talk about this, but like, I really think he's already like, one of, if not the best running back in the NFL. And he's played two games. It's crazy. Like when you slow down these plays and you watch, cause I've done this a few times and like, it's just, it, it's weird what he does to defenders. And I think it's just the change of direction, like the balance, like he'll slam on the, like he'll make a cut and the guy that whoever was like pursuing him about to tackle him, he'll go flying like five feet. Like he got shoved in the back. Like he just, he just breaks people off. Like with no effort. It's crazy. Cause it doesn't look like he's doing anything special. It looks like he's just making a little baby cut and, and whenever he makes a cut, whoever is defending him just just gets absolutely juked out of their shoes. It's it's so weird. It's so effortless. Yeah, he doesn't move like a guy who's 220, 225 pounds. I mean, people forget he's that big. I mean, he is reminiscent of Saquon Barkley. Uh, I would say he's got better balance and uh, better strength than Saquon Barkley. He might not have that breakaway speed like Saquon. But he is in the perfect situation here in Atlanta. I mean, his usage is through the roof. And obviously, you know, we're all excited and uh, about B. John Robinson. I don't know how sustainable that usage is, but if he sustains that usage, Chase mentioned it earlier, he will be an offensive player of the year candidate. I mean, there's no well, doubt I about think, that. Yeah. I think he's on pace right now. I did an article before the season about records he could potentially break and challenge, and one of them was yards from scrimmage for a rookie, for a running back. And right now he's on pace to eclipse those marks. Yeah, well, no, I think you can sustain it because they still have Algier doing all the dirty work in the middle, and that's exactly how it should be. Al, you know, you look at, you know, Rob, Bijan's on an orbit route. You know, he's getting these passes out in the flats. He's running these, like, toss sweeps to the side, and then Algier's still up the middle doing all the dirty work, and I think that's how you keep him fresh and how you do sustain him. I was looking at the box score from this game earlier today when I was writing an article, and, like, do you all realize we had, like, 78 plays, and we ran the ball 45 times? Nearly double. I kind of love it. We Nearly had, we double. Had, had, we, almost, we had 200 more yards than the Packers. Uh, and somehow this was a one point game. Um, but uh, if you look at the box score stats, I mean, we, I mean, we dominated this game for in, in a lot of areas. Uh, obviously, Jordan Love, I thought he was pretty good. But I mean, defensively, they only gave up 250 yards. They only gave up 250 yards. So it wasn't just the offense. And, and the days of giving up 400 plus yards and 30 plus points seems to be over for this defense, which is another talking point. I know we've been talking about Bijan Robinson and Desmond Ritter, but. Uh, this defense, you know, it, it's new look and it's living up to the hype early in the season. Yeah. One last thing I did want to say about the offense. I don't know what kind of rule that is in place that says that Matt Collins' uh, catch wasn't a touchdown, but it's got to be the dumbest rule in the entire rule book. Yeah, I think everybody's sitting here, even the Packers fans. I had a, I have a Packer friend um, and he was very confused how that wasn't ruled a touchdown. I think everybody's sitting here on Monday thinking, you know, <laughs> we won, but that should have still been a touchdown. That was a weird, weird play call. Yeah, but, you know, back to the defense, like you said, though, uh, it was nice to see Caden Ellis. Yeah, he had a huge sack. We were talking about how he might be used as an edge rusher more. Uh, but, yeah, the defense, like, they showed up. Like, yeah, they, they bent a little bit. They gave up two touchdowns to Jaden Reed, I think. But, I mean, A.J. Terrell, uh, by the way, I don't know if you guys caught this. A.J. Terrell had one of the most effortless, like, yes, that that's, beautiful that, pass breakup. Yes. Topic. Like, I, I, I was wondering if I was just seeing things wrong because Jordan Love threw an absolute spear to somebody, and A.J. Terrell just, like, put his arm up. And just yeah, like, and, like, it's like he knew the ball was coming, and right when it was coming, even though he wasn't looking at it, he was just like, get out of here. Just, like, ta just tap your <laughs> like, like, I was like, what? I was like, what just happened? I had to rewatch that play, like, three times. I was like, what just happened right there? It was, yeah, it was, was effortless. Crazy. Yeah, he was just gliding and just went. <laughs> that was a beautiful throw by Jordan Love. I bet a lot of Packers fans are sitting here today thinking, wow, that should have been a touchdown. It should have been a touchdown. Anybody other than A.J. Terrell on that guy, that's a touchdown pretty much every single day of the week. I mean, because we had Trey Flowers on the other side, and he had a very, very, very rough afternoon. I'm pretty sure – I was watching the game at a bar, but I'm pretty sure he got pulled at one point in Mike Hughes came and finished the drive. He didn't sit the rest of the game. I think he came back in, but I'm pretty sure he got pulled. So I don't know what exactly – uh, the coaching staff was thinking, I mean, what are you doing pulling a guy in the middle of a drive and then putting him right back? At, I mean, that was a wild call. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they pulled him. I don't know, but Jeff Akuta should be back next week. I think yeah, we need him. I think it, Patterson too. I, I was surprised. I thought Patterson was going to be healthy. Or, so I was going to say, 
look how look how dangerous this offense looks, and we are not even healthy. Cordero Patterson adds a wrinkle, a dynamic to this offense, similar to Bijan Robinson, where you could have two running backs on the field. I don't know if you guys noticed, Falcons fans, you should notice this. It's just it's called a uh, pony package, Pony Express. It's when two tailbacks are on the field, and Bijan Robinson's in motion in the slot, out wide, while Algiers in the backfield, and it adds such a dynamic to the offense. And Cordero Patterson's only going to accentuate. Uh, that part of Arthur Smith's offense. It's going to be so exciting to see uh, Cordero Patterson, B. John Robinson on the field at the same time. I mean, they're two of the most elusive big running backs in the NFL. People forget Cordero Patterson's like 220, 225 pounds. Him and B. John on the same field who can hurt you in the run game and in the passing game, that's going to be a headache for a defensive coordinator. Yeah, one last thing that I wanted to highlight is the pass protection. That was a huge uh, that was a huge point of emphasis. We talked about it going into the week. I thought they held up. I mean, they only had one sack for two yards for the most part I, against a good Green Bay defensive line. If they can pass protect like that, and you can interject, uh, you know, bring Cordell Patterson back into the picture. I mean, this offense is going to be scary. And I also think this could be one of those games we look back maybe in a year or at the end of the season, and we're like. This is the turning point for Desmond Ritter. If there is, if there, if there is one, if you're talking about confidence and stuff like that, I mean, he now 100 with this comeback win. There's no questions about his job. Like he can go out there and ball. He did it against a good defense. He did it when it mattered. Uh, you know, from a confidence perspective, you have to think this will go a long way in him. You know, proving that he can be an NFL starting quarterback in this league. Absolutely, I think he solidified. You know. A lot. He he silenced a lot of doubters on Sunday. In the first half, I was ready to fire off some hot takes, but he he silenced me and everybody else who was ready to, you know, call for Taylor Heideke in that second half. Yeah. Well, coming up after the break, Georgia squeaks by against South Carolina. We're going to talk about it.